I'll be taking general mathematics and the topic is circuit theorems. Circuit theorem involves circles and angles, understanding the relationship between uh, various angles and how they connect in various forms. So we are going to look at the first one, which has to do with chord of a circle. A chord is a straight line that divides the circle into two segments. As you can see here, the red line here is a chord. And the black dot here represents the center of the circle. And the green line here represents a line drawn from the center of the circle to the midpoint of the chord. The theorem on the board here states that the line joining the center of the circle to the midpoint of a chord is always perpendicular to the chord and it bisects the chord into two equal halves. Or another way of saying it is a line drawn from the midpoint of a chord to the center of the circle is always perpendicular to the chord. This is a very important theorem in mathematics, especially when you're solving problems involving a uh, chord of a circle. Normally, this type of question always leads to the application of Pythagoras theorem. So we move on to the second one, that is our B. We are going to look at inscribed angles. Inscribed angles, inscribed angle theorems. We look at the first one. An inscribed angle is half of the central angle. All I'm trying to tell you here is that the angle at the center of a circle is always twice the angle at the circumference. If you look at the center here, we have angle X, you should know that angle S is equals to 2Y. Likewise, Y is equals to X divided by 2. Please take note of this theorem. It is very, very important. Secondly, we move on to uh, the theorem on semicircles. The angle in a semicircle is a right angle. As you can see, this is a diameter here, dividing the circle into two halves. And in the half here, we have an angle which lies in the semicircle. The value of this angle is a right angle. It is 90 degrees. Then the third theorem here has to do with angles that lie in the same segment, angles in the same segment. If you look at this point, and you look at this point, you will notice that a line can be drawn from this point to this point. This line here is a chord. And this chord divides this circle into two segments. This is a minor segment, and this is the major segment. So a careful observation shows that all the three angles, x, y, and z, lies in the major segment. As a result, they have the same value. Please take note. Angles in the same segment are always equal. Hence, I can say that angle x is equal to angle y, and is also equal to angle z. They are all equal. We move on to the third aspect where we look at cyclic quadrilateral. A quadrilateral is a four-sided shape. For you to have a cyclic quadrilateral, then the quadrilateral must be inscribed in a circle and all the four vertices must touch the circle. Please take note. All the four vertices of the quadrilateral must touch the circle. Hence, if you have a situation like this, even though this is a quadrilateral, this is not a cyclic quadrilateral because out of the four vertices, there's just three that are touching the circle. So please take note. For a cyclic quadrilateral, the four vertices must touch the circle. Now, what are we expected to understand about cyclic quadrilaterals? We are expected to know that the sum of the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral gives 180 degree. That is, angles in the opposite segment are supplementary in a cyclic quadrilateral. Also, if you have an exterior angle at any of the given vertices, the value of the exterior angle at this point is always equal to the value of the opposite interior angle. So this angle here can also be given as C degree. Please take note of that. Now D, tangents to circles. 
What do we mean by a tangent? A tangent is a straight line that touches a curve or a circle at just one point. So AB is a tangent because it is a straight line that touches the circle at a point. You should know that a tangent is perpendicular to the radius at the point of contact. The line drawn from this point to this point is referred to as your radius R. It meets the tangent at this point T. The angle between the radius and the tangent at point T is given as 90 degrees. That is what this theorem is all about. Then the second theorem, under tangents to circle, we have that tangents to a circle from an external point are equal in length. Here is our circle here, and here is our external point. Tangents are drawn from this point to the circle, as you can see, and then you have this sign here to show you that the length from this point of contact to this point and from this point of contact to this point are equal. Now we move on to the last one before we take some examples. The angle between a tangent to a circle and a chord through the point of contact is equal to the angle in the alternate segment. If you look at the diagram here, we have a tangent, an angle is created that is x degree. This angle here is equal to this angle here. The reason for that is alternate segment. Likewise, we have an angle here, which is angle y, and we also have another angle here. Both angles are equal, and the reason is alternate segment. Please, you have to make sure you look at the diagram closely and understand the connection between the two angles so that you can easily identify them when given questions on circle theory. We now move on to our first example, which says, find the value of x. We have a diagram here, and we have our unknown angle x. If you look at this diagram carefully, there are so many information hidden. You have to look at it carefully and try to bring out all the various theorems that are available in the diagram. First, I can see angle 30 degree from this point to this point we have a chord that separates the circle into two segments minor and major. So this angle lies in the major segment and the value is 30 degree. We also have another angle that lies in this segment. I'm sure you can see that. Let me trace that again. The value of this angle is 30 degree too. Why? I told you earlier, angles in the same segment are always equal. Angles in the same segment, in the same segment, are equal. So if this angle is 30 degree, then this angle too should be 30 degree. Okay, next, I can see a cyclic for the lateral. I'm sure you can see the four vertices. One, two, three, and four. That is a cyclic quadrilateral. And what did I tell you about cyclic quadrilateral? I said the sum of the opposite angles of a cyclic quadrilateral is always what? Supplementary. So the addition of this angle and this angle should give me 180. What is the value of this angle here? Remember, this is a straight line. So if the value of this angle here is x, Therefore, the value of the adjacent angle here should be 180 degree minus x. Hence, 180 degree minus x, which is the value of the angle here, plus the angle here, which is the sum of 28 degree and 30 degree, should give us 180. If I open the bracket, I will have 180 degree minus x, then plus 58 equals 180. If 
I simplify, I'm going to have uh, 238 minus x equals 180. If I collect like terms, I'm going to have 238 uh, minus 180 equals to x. So therefore, my x is 58. You can see that solving questions on circle uh, theorems are very, very easy, provided you know your theorems. Now we move on to example two, where we are expected to find the size of the marked angles in the given diagram. Look at the diagram carefully. We have our center O, and then we have a line that passes through center O. This line is a diameter, and it divides the circle into two equal halves. So we have a semicircle. I'm sure you can still remember that angle in a semicircle is always 90 degree. Angle in a semicircle is 90 degree, and that angle is W. So therefore, I can claim that W equals 90 degree. Reason is angle in a semicircle. Okay, now we have the value of W. I'm sure you know how to obtain the value of X. How? We apply sum of angles in a triangle. In this triangle, we have two angles already. The only angle left unknown is X. So therefore, I can say X plus W plus 48 degrees should give me 180. Sum of angles in a triangle. The value of W is 90 degree. So X plus 90 plus 48 equals 180. This sum here gives 138. So X plus 138 equals 180. And what do you think your value of X should be? X should be the difference between 180 and 138 degree. X is 42 degree. So we have our value of X. Now, we need to find Y. In SS1, you were taught exterior angles of a triangle. If E is an exterior angle, and A, B, and C are interior angles. You were taught that E, which is the exterior angle to this triangle, is always equal to the sum of the two opposite interior angles, which is A plus B. Do you notice that X is an exterior angle to this triangle? So X is equal to the sum of 30 degree and Y. Therefore, I can say that X is equal to Y plus 30. And what is X? X is 42. Y plus 30. If I collect like terms, that means 42 minus 30 equals Y, which implies that my Y equals to 12. So we have all our unknowns. W is 90. X is 42 and Y is 12. Okay? I believe at this point you should be able to try some exercises on your own. So I have two exercises for you. The first one here says find the size of the marked angle. And we only have an unknown here, which is angle Z. If you look at the diagram carefully, you will notice that. This is a cyclic quadrilateral. So from here, you should be able to connect this angle and the angle here. I'm sure you know what to do. But at the same time, you also need to carry out some little construction in order to solve the problem. If you carry out this construction, this becomes an isosceles triangle, and this one here becomes angle in a semicircle. And then you have your solution. The second exercise here has to do with tangents 
drawn from an external point to a circle. And from the theorem, you should know that this is equal to this. Please take note. And if you look at this, this is an angle at the circumference of the circle. This is an angle at the center of the circle. So you should understand the connection between W and X. From there, you should be able to have your solution. Thank you very much for being a part of this class. If you have any comment, please do not forget to put it in the comment box. God bless you all. Thank you.